Hello, everyone. My name is John Bristow. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. This is Octopus 101. Uh, this is a webinar where we show you how Octopus works, why we create it, what it does. Uh, it's a really good way to get introduced to Octopus. Uh, if you haven't attended one of these before, uh, welcome. Uh, if you don't know anything about Octopus, that's fine. You can check us out online. We are a deployment solution. So if you're a customer who's um, if you're someone looking for a solution to deploy software, Octopus may help. So um, the, the intent of this is to be highly um, interactive. I like to answer questions. So we've got lots of folks from around the world joining us today for today's webinar. Uh, great to see you all. Thanks for joining us. This is a live webinar, so feel free to ask questions if you have any. I'm happy to take them here. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, kind of get things started here. So I'm going to switch gears here and talk a little bit about Octopus. So um, we do these monthly. And if you need to reach me, you can reach me at this email address here. Uh, I am the community director for Octopus Deploy. So I do a lot of work in the community and um, interface with customers there. Um, what you're going to learn in this webinar are basically four key things. So the first thing you're going to look at is how Octopus works and probably more importantly, why you should use it. So if you're if you're someone who's looking to deploy software, Chances are you've come up with your own set of scripts or some custom solution, or maybe using something that's off the shelf that doesn't do deployments very well. A good example of this might be an all-in-one sort of uh, product. We're going to show you in this webinar why you should consider Octopus for deployments. We're going to talk a lot about what are called what we like to call fundamentals. So in order to understand how Octopus works, you have to understand these sort of terms that we have. So things like what is a project. What is a deployment process? What is a release? These and other terms will define in this webinar. So don't worry, by the end of this webinar, you'll understand everything in terms of those concepts. and You'll be able to apply them uh, when talking to someone about Octopus. The third thing we'll look at is how to create a deployment process from scratch. Deployment processes are basically a series of steps that you use to deploy software from uh, Octopus to some target. And we'll show you how that works. And we'll show you how to build those. Uh, it's it's a really easy process, in fact. And then finally, we'll wrap things up by showing you how you can trigger uh, that deployment process through an integration um, through CIs or continuous integration. So continuous integration is sort of this term that we define for describing products like GitHub, uh, GitLab, um, uh, Azure DevOps, uh, TeamCity, these and other products that we have out in the marketplace that people use for uh, build and test uh, what we call uh, continuous integration. We'll show you how to kickstart a deployment process from those uh, products so you can see the linkage between the two. And so hopefully by the end of this webinar, you'll have a good sense of what is what is Octopus and how it works. So to begin to start the, the to tell the story, um, I'd like to share with you a sort of a vision of how we see deployments in a very simple scenario. So on the left hand side, we have our app, which is typically consistent of a binary, uh, an executable, that sort of thing. On the right, we have our customers and somewhere in the middle is us, um, the, the DevOps engineer who's really happy at this point, and is looking to utilize a technology such as uh, Octopus uh, in this context. Um, maybe in the future, but for right now is, is content using deployment scripts. They're using deployment scripts to push these uh, apps to their customers. And that production may be um, an in, in, in a house environment, or it may be in the cloud, it really doesn't matter. But this is the simple uh, lay of the land um, when it comes to basic deployments. But as we all know, as software evolves, and as um, systems evolve, uh, when things get more complex, they become more difficult. And so in this scenario, you can see we as a DevOps engineer is becoming a little bit less enthused about our job. We've got not only more than one customer now, we've got um, multiple versions of the same product, potentially uh, what we like to call tenants, or we have different deployment targets, uh, Kubernetes, for example, on-prem, uh, in the cloud, things like that. And so it's very challenging for us to address this. And this is where it becomes really hard to maintain deployment scripts. Um, there's a lot of copy and paste. There's a lot of, it's a very brittle process. Rollbacks aren't even a, even an issue. And it's, it's always the train moves forward in this scenario. And as we obviously grow and scale, this can be quite a nightmare. You can see our head is exploding here at the uh, tail end of this deployment. And so you can see that there's lots of challenges associated with this. Um, so that being said, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we have to account for. And so this is part of the reason why you'll use a product like Octopus Deploy. So Octopus Deploy addresses not only this challenge, but other challenges, but in prim primarily so it is focused around doing deployments. So Octopus Deploy helps make complex deployments easy. That's the way we like to think of it. 
And so with deployment now managed through Octopus, it's your single source of truth. It's your single deployment automation platform for managing all of your enterprise deployment processes with consistency and, and compliance. And those two key concepts, consistency and compliance are really important here because at the heart of Octopus Deploy is all of that aspects of rollbacks and um, change management and environments, and then compliance around the lines of, you know, auditing and, and logging and making sure that everything is accountable uh, for changes that have flown through. And so this is really where Octopus um, plays its part. Now, if we take a look at the land, Octopus is not an all-in-one solution. In fact, we're what we like to call a best a part of a best of breed pipeline. So you can pick and choose the solutions you want. Um, you can use Jira for task management or item tracking. You can use GitHub for source control. You can use Actions for workflow if you want to kick off CI processes. And then maybe you might deploy that to a variety of targets such as Azure. But you'll notice that in the middle, um, there's a big question mark around deployments. And we feel like that's where Octopus Deploy really shines. And in each one of those scenarios, you'll notice that those are largely addressed or solved problems. Like CI, for, for all intents and purposes, is a solved problem. There are more than enough solutions around CI. And the problem is, is that with CI, people tend to use CI for CD. They equate the two. They say CI and CD are the same, and they are very not. Um, CI is all about building and testing, whereas CD is about continuous delivery through deployments and utilizing targets, possibly a set of runbooks for maintaining infrastructure. That's really where Octopus Deploy shines. And so we feel like this is um, really a, a really good opportunity for you to utilize, utilize a tool such as Octopus Deploy for your deployments. And we, we respect the fact that the ecosystem is well beyond just you know, certain scenarios like GitHub Actions. It can include other environments like TeamCity or Jenkins or Azure DevOps or GitLab. You name a, a CI solution, chances are um, you know, they're going to utilize a set of custom scripts for that, and it's not very manageable. So Octopus Deploy integrates with that and allows you to use that as part of that cohesive pipeline. In addition to that, there are a wide variety of cloud targets, on-prem uh, targets, Kubernetes as a target, for example, these and other targets we support. And then further to that, we also support um, the sort of ancillary aspects around deployments, so such as infrastructure provisioning via Terraform. So if you want to use Terraform for provisioning infrastructure via configuration, you can do that. We have a Terraform provider for Octopus Deploy itself. We integrate with uh, backend systems for change management, such as ServiceNow. These and other scenarios we are um, supporting as part of Octopus, Octopus Deploy, making that part of that best of breed pipeline. Anyways, um, that's a, enough sort of laying the, the scope of the land. So let's get into a demo and see how this works. So I'm going to jump over here and show you what the Octopus dashboard looks like. So this is the Oct Octopus dashboard. This is basically your source of truth of where your deployments are and in what phase of your environments they are in. So on the left hand side here, you can see my projects. So I have projects here that are um, scoped by a project group. And I can see the state of each one of those deployments. So I can see in each one of these environments that I that I have here, whether it's deployment, uh, sorry, development, test, staging, pre-production, production, I can see what versions have been deployed to each one of those environments. Further to that, I can see if any of these deployments have failed. I can also promote these deployments across environments if I so wish. This dashboard is really what a lot of customers like about Octopus. It's this sort of single pane of glass that I can see where all my deployments is where they are, what state they're in. Now, of course, as we get into the weeds, um, Octopus is more than just this, and we'll, we'll take a look at some examples. But I'd like to start by, sh by showing you a very simple example. Um, so here I have a very simple instance of Octopus Deploy. It has a single space. A space is a, a, a notion of isolation, so you can isolate your projects from each other. I'm going to create a space here that um, will allow me to basically create a deployment process from scratch. So I'm going to give it a name called Octopus 101. I'll give myself the rights uh, of being a manager itself, and I'll hit save. What this is going to do is provide me an area by within which I can actually create deployment processes. So I'll go ahead and jump over to that space just to show you that context switch. So here I have a blank space. There's nothing in it. There's no projects. So let's go ahead and set this up to deploy our first application. This is really where I want to show you hello world in terms of Octopus. So we provide this nice sort of curated experience where we ask you questions like, hey, what's the name of your project? I'll give it a name like Octopus 101. You'll notice here I have the option of specifying whether or not I want to persist this project definition to source control. 
So VCS or versions control system uh, integration allows you to integrate with Git and you can write the settings for your project that are basically defined within Octopus to that repository, which means you can utilize branching, you can do change management within Git to make changes to your Octopus projects if you so wish. I'm not going to specify that here. If I specify some of the advanced settings, I can specify things like the description, the, the group that it falls under. I'm just going to assume the defaults and hit save. When I hit save, I'm going to be um, land in one of this, uh, another dialogue that allows me to define what are called environments. Now environments are, are they're, they're semantically meaningful to you, but they can be named anything that you wish. So for example, I can give the, the, the sort of canonical names here, like development, staging and production. I can add environments or I can skip this entirely. I'll assume the three defaults here because that's a safe assumption for this. Once I specify those environments, I have my project set up, I have my environments ready to go. The next thing is to define what's called the deployment process. And this is really at the heart of what Octopus does. So a deployment process is a series of steps that we execute either in parallel or one after another that will deploy, do the act of deploying your application. Um, and I, I know that that term, most people will assume like getting a binary from this machine to this machine, but deployments can be far more than just that. They can be, you know, provisioning databases, they can be configuring schemas, standing up instances of IS, configuring cloud providers, et cetera. These and other types of things you need to do as part of a deployment process. And so um, there's more than just getting bits from one machine to another. So I'm gonna create a process here. We provide some examples out of the box, um, but I'll, let's create a process from scratch here and I'll show you what the editor experience looks like. So now we take you from that experience where you just set up a few parameters into the heart of Octopus, which is the process explorer or process editor, excuse me. So the process, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm fighting a cold. The process editor is where you take a series of predefined steps you can think of these as like, you know, kind of like creating a, a, a cake with a recipe and you're, you know, grabbing the eggs out of the fridge and grabbing the flour, etc. and the sugar. Um, these are the series of steps that you construct together to cr construct your deployment process. On the left hand side here, you'll notice we have a series of categories. So these categories include things like I want to do things with Kubernetes or I want to do things with Terraform or maybe I want to target a cloud uh, provider such as Amazon. Uh, Google Cloud, for example, these and other things are denoted there. I can select any one of these and then add them to my existing process. Now we include a bunch of steps in here, but if we don't have all of the steps that you need, we have over 549 community steps from the community that have been written. So these are all steps that the community have written for a wide variety of systems that exist out there. And there are a lot. So there's lots and lots of community steps that you can use if there's one that we don't support out of the box. Jumping back here to the process explorer, you can see we have some of our featured uh, steps like deploying a Helm chart, deploying using customize, etc. I'm going to use this one, which is our most popular one, which is called run a script. All this does is what it what it sounds like. It just executes some script in line. When I select that step, you'll notice on the right hand side, left hand side here, we have our step that's been added to our deployment process. So the first step here is run a script. I can give it a name. I can define a whole bunch of other configuration values associated with this step. So I can specify things like what is the actual code I want to write, what uh, run, what is the actual code written in, for example. So we have five built in providers. Um, I can also utilize a series of variables as well if I so choose. So variables are those values that I can look up at runtime during deployments and utilize those in line within my deployment scripts. This is a very powerful mechanism of Octopus Deploy in the sense that these are values that can change depending upon what environment you're targeting. And so it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of your scripts. And these, these uh, variables you can define yourself as well. Very powerful mechanism of deployment processes. In addition to that, I can specify a whole bunch of other settings. For example, I can say things like, what environments do I wish to target? So I can only specify certain environments so I can say I want this running on just the development and nothing else. Or I can say any if I want, I can specify the run conditions for this step, always run or only run in certain scenarios, etc. I can also specify things like I can't skip this step. So you can set things up whereby people as part of their deployment processes can run them, but they can elect after the word afterwards to skip certain steps. 
Um, these and other settings I can define as part of this process. And so there's lots of, there's lots of things that I can do here if I wanted to. So um, if I wanted to, I could certainly utilize these as part of um, a script if I wanted to, and I can utilize these. Um, let's go back here for a second into my project and I'll discard changes. And we'll take a look at an example that we ship out of the box. This is just showing you a contrived example of hello world. Um, so this is a process here where you say run a script, and this just saves me some typing here. Um, the script step that's been defined here allows me to omit some statements. So hello world using PowerShell, learn more using here, um, define some other examples here. But this is basically the script step that I'm going to run in the context of this process. Now, at this point, I could add some other steps if I wanted to. So if I went back, for example, I could certainly utilize um, other steps within this flow. So if I go into my process explorer here, sorry, here, I'm inside my projects, go to Octopus 101 and go to my process. I can add other steps here if I wanted to. So I could add another step here and have this run in, in, in either in parallel or as a, a subsequent step as part of this. But let's go ahead and um, create a release for this. So once I have my deployment process set up, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create what's called a release. Now, release is not necessarily what you would think of when releasing software. When developers think of releases, they typically think of I'm shipping bits from one server to the next. And that's not what we're doing here. A release is simply a snapshot of all the configuration settings of all the deployment steps that we're going to be executing in concert to do a deployment. And so here I'll define things such as my the version number that I wish to use, and I can use semantic versioning here if I so wish, um, any release notes, and these release notes are based in Markdown. I can also auto generate these based on sort of like commits that I've made to Git. I'm going to save the defaults here. This is just a .0 .1 release. And you'll notice that when I create this release, it's gone ahead and persisted or created a snapshot of all the things that I have associated with this. So the lifecycle associated with their environments, any variables that I may have used, any artifacts like binaries, for example, I wanted to use. And now I have a release that's now capable of being deployed to an actual environment. So we can new, we, if we want to, we can now choose to deploy this to, de to do our development environment. Now, the development environment here is really not deploying to anything. An environment is just a semantic name that I can choose to associate with a, a number of physical environments. Um, in this instance, it's going to run on a built-in worker that we provide, but uh, you get the gist of this when you look at this. When I create a release, I can choose to execute that release at any time I wish. So I can choose to, if I want, run it now or later. Um, I can also elect if I want to skip any steps. So I can choose to skip any steps if this is a particular type of release that I want to do. I can specify a failure mode. So if, if we have a failure, um, we can roll back changes, for example. I'm just going to simply select the defaults and click deploy. Now, at this stage, what's going to happen is we're going to get a running log, a task log of all the things that are happening within my environment for that uh, release that we've just created. Now, if I was connected to physical environments here, you'd see connections uh, occurring, um, you'd see logs associated with that. But this really demonstrates um, a lot of the integration that we have um, for traceability. And so this is in, in line with our, our st uh, statements around compliance. Um, this is really where you see a lot of this traceability come to to bear. And as part of this deployment, um, which is using a built in worker, uh, you can see how we're logging all those steps here. And of course, we get the happy dialogue when we do our deployment. So there you go. Um, but if we take a look at, you know, all the things that have occurred, the task summary, who who conducted the uh, the deployment, when was it conducted, all the tasks that are associated, the history associated with this, these are really pointing to that compliance aspect associated with this. If I had integrated build information, which is like git commits, this would show up here as well. But this is really at the heart of what Octopus provides um, out of the box for this capability. So these are other scenarios you can imagine. Um, this is where these things take place. So great, we've got a deployment. We've you've seen basically how this works from uh, from the get go, and uh, that's really your hello world uh, demo of Octopus. Now there are other parts and pieces to Octopus that we haven't addressed yet. Um, we have features like runbooks, uh, which allow you to provision infrastructure. Um, this allows you to do centralized, um, these are like kind of like emergency tasks or disaster recovery scripts that you want to execute. Um, you can run Terraform scripts as well. 
Um, we have uh, a section for variables as well. We have uh, support for tenants. These and other aspects um, you'll see as you get further into the weeds of Octopus. But um, for now, just realize that this is a deployment process that has integrated steps, and that's how they um, that's how they execute in the context of Octopus. So there you go. All right. So jumping back, um, what you saw was something that was a, a microcosm or an elaboration of the following. Uh, you can see in our deployment process, we get a visual representation of everything that occurs, including conditions. So certain steps can have conditions that say um, only deploy this dependent upon certain conditions or use child steps. Um, we have integrated notes via Markdown. So Markdown integration allows other people in your team to know what this step does and how it works. Um, we also have the ability to do parallel step execution. So we can have two steps or multiple steps run at the same time, or we can have them based on a condition, whether or not one fails or not, et cetera. We also have the ability of denoting where these environment, uh, where these steps are occurring, what environments are they rolling, are they um, executing against? So this one only occurs in staging, for example, whereas other ones will um, occur in all environments. And this sort of level of control gives you a lot of power and flexibility when defining your deployments. So underpinning some of the uh, reasons as to why you would use a tool like Octopus Deploy really speaks to the heart of some of the things that we encapsulate as part of our, um, our telling the story about why you would use Octopus. So when we talk about reliable and risk-free deployments, what we're talking about here is the idea that um, oftentimes when you write deployment scripts, um, you don't have any capability of doing rollbacks. It's always the train rolls forward and it goes in one direction. So the idea here is that you have the ability built into Octopus to do rollbacks. I apologize, I'm, I'm fighting a cold, as you can tell. Um, so with built-in rollback support, Octopus allows you to easily revert changes that you've done to deployments. Um, in addition to that, we also have uh, integration with a feature that I showed briefly called Runbooks. This is where your ops team gets involved for provisioning infrastructure, for running routine tasks, um, things like disaster recovery, maintaining databases, et cetera. These and other types of runbooks you can execute as part of this. And that's typically uh, something that you'll do as part of your deployment is maintaining infrastructure. If you're working with Kubernetes or you're working with containers, um, not a problem. Octopus integrates really, really well with this. So you can deploy to um, orchestration engines like Kubernetes. Um, we support YAML. Uh, you can utilize a YAML-based deployment. We support Helm. Uh, Octopus itself has a Helm chart for it. And this is all exposed to you very, through a very friendly UI, which we, you've seen an example of. Another feature which um, I spoke to briefly is this concept called tenants. So tenants are this idea that you have the same application, but that um, it's a different um, instance of an application for very different types of customers. So you can think of an example of, like if I'm running, say, um, uh, a health clinic or a pet clinic, um, I may want to have different types of uh, instances of that same app, depending upon where the, the clinic is located, what part of the country, or what type of clinic it may be. We, we quantify these as tenants, and you can denote those in, as part of your deployment process, and you can actually have different types of uh, apps running um, based on those tenant to deployments. And so multi-tenancy support or tenant support inside of Octopus is a core concept of Octopus. And it's something that a lot of our customers, once they get to a higher maturity level within Octopus, really love. Um, Multi-tenancy is a, a game changer for a lot of our customers um, when using it in the context of um, different types of applications. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the support for compliance uh, is really at the heart of what Octopus is is made for. Um, if you're wanting to do tracing and lauded, uh, logging and auditing of these uh, things that are occurring, whether that's integration with ServiceNow or, for example, Jira Service Management for kicking off a process based on ITSM. Um, these are things that you can do. And uh, that's just scratching the surface of all the things that we have built in. All right, let's take a look at another example or demo uh, showcasing what this looks like in the context of CI. All right, so I'm going to widen the screen here. And let's take a look at an example that utilizes GitHub Actions. So um, this sample that you see here is using YAML. Uh, this is a typical GitHub Action. You have a YAML description here based in text. Uh, defines a series of steps. 
And these steps are basically used um, to denote um, what are the sort of actions you wish to do. And if you want to see what these actions looks like in the context of Octopus Deploy, we actually have a number of actions that we've built in. These are available through the marketplace that allows you to integrate with Octopus Deploy. So by going to the uh, to the GitHub marketplace, um, you can actually do a search for Octopus and you'll see a number of integration points there. So we have a, an app that we have now available. We're not going to talk about that in this demo, but we have a series of actions that you can use in the context of your YAML. So for example, we can run run books, we can create um, deployments, we can push build info. So this is in the context of git, uh, git commits, etc. Uh, we can push packages, we can deploy releases, these and other types of actions we have built into the marketplace that you can use. And this allows you to do those actions in the context of uh, a workflow. So if you want to kick those things off from GitHub, that's certainly something that you can do. And this is the example of how we do it. Another example of in the integration is something like JetBrains, uh, TeamCity. So TeamCity is a very popular CI server. Uh, we have the most popular integration within the marketplace for TeamCity itself. That's our Octopus Deploy integration. And you can integrate it as part of TeamCity if you so wish. Looking further beyond that, like Azure DevOps, here's an example of a pipeline that I've created that can utilize a variety of uh, built-in integration steps that we have for Azure DevOps. So you can do things similar to what you saw with GitHub Actions, push package, create release, etc. These and other types of um, uh, steps you can utilize within the context of Azure DevOps. And so by showcasing this, what I'm trying to, to showcase here is the integration level that we have within various CI products uh, for your consideration. Um, and so by looking at this, you can see how a lot of these things will kick off from a CI process and then trigger the deployments here uh, that is exposed through Octopus itself. And so that's an integration point in which you can see those things running. Now, I did mention earlier on that we have integration through the marketplace for actions. So actions are um, those things that you uh, emit yourself through uh, workflows. But I also mentioned that we have this new app capability. This is something that we've just recently shipped. And this allows you to basically create a trusted connection between GitHub and your Octopus instance. And this basically eliminates the needs, need for utilizing API keys, etc. And the reason why this is nice is because it allows you to do automated, automated integration between GitHub and Octopus uh, as part of this experience. So that's another capability we've just added along with other things as well, such as co-pilot integration. Uh, so these things, these and other capabilities we're uh, showcasing as part of integration with GitHub. And these are things that you can check out as well if you're on the marketplace. So awesome. Cool. I'm not seeing any questions in the comments, but feel free to ask any questions. If you have any, uh, I'm happy to answer them here. All right. Let's move on now to uh, some other things. So um, just to highlight some of the things that you've seen in this demo, uh, you've seen how Octopus works and why you should use it. Uh, we talked about some of the fundamental concepts like projects, deployment processes, and releases. There are other concepts as well, such as runbooks or tenants. We didn't have time to talk about them here, but the, the intention of this is just to showcase um, what's possible with Octopus Deploy. Um, we showed you how to create a deployment process from scratch and then show you some elaborate examples of that and then how to trigger those deployments via an integration with CI. Believe me, there's more to look at. Um, there's a lot more to look at when you, when you consider the space that is as part of this. Um, but again, this is just meant to show you how to kick the tires. Um, I mentioned earlier our integration with community step templates. Um, this is the integration we have with the community. If there's a part, um, there's a, a, an integration that you're looking for that we don't ship out of the box. Our community has likely targeted it. So we have integration with like HashiCorp Vault or doing uh, certain checks against Oracle backends, etc. These and other types of scenarios uh, we support through that community space. We've recently shipped 24. Uh, 2024.2. Uh, lots of great new features in there. We publish a lot of content around our newest releases. You can check it out on our What's New page if you want. And, um, and this is one of the things I really love. We've got our roadmap. Um, you'll find this at roadmap.octopus.com. In fact, I think I have this listed here. Yes, I do. So if you go to roadmap.octopus.com, there you'll find a list of features that were are under consideration. 
Uh, these and other things you can find listed there. Uh, we have our planned set of features that are available and also things that we've shipped. We've shipped a lot over the past few months. We've only been using Product Board for a few months, and so you can see we've got lots listed there. But if you're all, con if you're all uh, considering Octopus and you want to see what's coming in terms of features, um, and possibly you want to vote up one of, one of those features, you can so let us know. Or if there's a feature that's missing, you can submit an idea as well. So we're very transparent in terms of how we utilize our feedback and how we um, uh, showcase what's coming in terms of our roadmap. Uh, the other thing worth noting is our community. You'll find us at octopus.com slash community. You can join our Slack. We have over 6,000 folks on our Slack that are asking questions around Octopus, getting help from others, uh, talking about continuous deployments, continuous delivery, etc. We have our insiders program. We have a bunch of resources available there. And we have our webinars as well, which you can check out at octopus.com slash webinars. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. But in the meantime, you can reach me at the e email that you see listed here. Or if you want to check out any other of our content that we have listed in terms of videos, you can check out our YouTube channel, which is at slash octopus deploy. We've recently redone our docs, which are awesome. Uh, our docs look great. You can find these at octopus.com slash docs. We have dark mode support now, but we're constantly updating these docs um, with new features. And so you'll get a good insight as to how to use Octopus effectively for your deployments. And so with that, um, I'd like to just take a second here and answer any questions if you have any. I don't see any listed here in the comments. This is live, so you can answer any, ask any questions if you want. Here's a question from Timmy. To connect from Octopus to a Kubernetes uh, cluster, does Kubernetes have to introduce its config to Octopus? So we have an Octopus agent, <coughs> excuse me. So we have an agent that you can install that allows you to communicate more effectively with Octopus, but um, you can certainly connect to Octopus, sorry, connect to Kubernetes via Octopus. Um, and there's a number of ways or mechanisms that you can use to connect to Octopus. Uh, when, we have a lot of that documented within our docs, um, which I've just highlighted, obviously. Um, if you want to read more about the Kubernetes agent, you'll find this listed up on our docs. Um, the Kubernetes agent itself is something that you'll install and allows that allows the facility of communicating with Kubernetes very easily. Um, and we have a number of mechanisms by which you can communicate. So we have polling mechanisms uh, built in for communication. We also have this mechanism. There's a lot of terminology that you'll under, you'll start to see a lot of when you start getting to the world of Octopus Deploy. Um, you have this concept of what's called tentacle, which is basically the way in which you communicate between remote um, infrastructure that you're deploying to and Octopus itself. Um, but this is something that we um, support as part of communicating with, with um, Kubernetes as part of that in, environment. Great question. Uh, Thomas asks, I have a car rental service. How could I use Octopus? Great question. So we have a lot of customers who use Octopus in the context of um, point of sale. So we have a lot of very successful, uh, very large uh, um, retail uh, customers who use Octopus for deployments, uh, point of sale. Um, you can imagine like a nightly deployment that occurs um, that uh, does deployments across thousands of terminals. Um, and we have scenarios that are supported just that across a, a, a large country. Um, those terminals um, vary in terms of their capability, but we have customers who do that very effectively. And so in the, in the sense of a car retail, uh, car rental service, what you could use it for is for deployments to those, those terminals. Or if you wanted, you could use integration uh, with our tenant support. So one example is a lot of folks want to use Octopus. Um, they want to they do a deployment for different tenants. And so what that means is I create a, I create an application, like say, um, in the case of a car, I'm using a, the, your example as the example here. For car rentals, I would imagine that every car rental um, location or franchise has to have its own um, segmentation of customers, its own uh, users, for example. Um, those and other aspects you can classify as part of being part of a tenant. So a tenant is an isolation context, if you will, of an application that is particular to that franchise or that store or that retail shop. Um, in the case of car rental, it might be the cars we have on, on site, uh, the customers that typically show up, any membership programs that we have, uh, any admins that we want to support. You can use tenants as part of your deployment process to support those car rental uh, locations. So you could do, you could set up, let's imagine you're in the U.S., and you want to do deployments across east, west, and central, 
you can do um, you can set those up as tenants in Octopus and deploy different versions of your application to each of those tenants. And so that gives you that control around that uh, for multi-tenancy. That's a great question. It's a very common scenario. And if you want to find out more about this, uh, we do have a page that talks about this. I'll see if I can bring it up here. I believe it's slash multi-tenancy. If you're all curious about reading more about what we support um, in terms of Octopus. So we have support for what are called tenanted deployments. This is a perfect scenario for like something like a car rental service if you have more than one location. Um, and we talk in great detail about why you want to do something like this. So we, we list physical locations as an example, uh, but this is something that you could certainly use in that context. And so multi-tenancy allows you to do just that. And we have a number of case studies and a white paper that talk about that. So you can check that out. That is available at slash multi-tenancy, or you can take a look at the URL, which is slash use case slash tenanted dash deployments. A lot of that stuff we'll have up in our resources section. So you'll find examples listed there if you're so curious. That's at the menu here at the top. Great question. Another question we have here, uh, how does Octopus Deploy have any features that Azure DevOps does not have? Um, that's a great question. So a lot of people will look at Azure DevOps and compare it to pipelines integration. So pipelines integration within Azure DevOps provides this sort of YAML based, well now YAML based um, deployment process. Um, but you know, when you take a look at CI solutions, and I would classify like Azure DevOps and GitLab and GitHub as CI CD sort of solutions, but they don't do the CI the CD very well. They their concept of environments is very primitive. Um, it's very basic. Um, and the same goes for Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps defines this notion of an environment, but it really doesn't go beyond that. Tenancy, multi-tenancy is definitely a, uh, something that Octopus um, shines in. And uh, a lot of these scenarios or a lot of these solutions don't have support for that. And they don't even take address the concept of multi-tenancy. Rollbacks can be different, uh, can be very different depending upon the, the service you're looking at. Uh, so in instance, so, so in most cases, the train always moves forward. Um, so they don't have this concept of rollbacks or runbook integration. A lot of stuff you have to kind of hand roll yourself or support yourself. Um, these are all built in as part of, of Octopus Deploy. So another great question there. I'll uh, hang out here just for a few seconds to see if you have any other questions. In the meantime, if you want to find out more, you can check out our website, which is at octopus.com. Uh, there you'll find all the stuff that I've just talked about. You can download a free trial. You can also create an instance of Octopus um, through our cloud in integration. So I forgot to mention, but Octopus is not only um, something that you can install in your local environment, but you can um, utilize it in a cloud scenario. So we have um, a feature called Octopus Cloud that you can use that allows you to host uh, your deployment processes with us if you wish. So that's available at octopus.com. I don't see any questions. So there you go. That wraps up another Octopus 101. Thank you for your time and attention. Really appreciate it. Feel free to reach out. Oh, another question that just came in here. Sorry, from Timmy. I guess the reason for using Argo CD, um, Argo CD uh, Kubernetes native extension is for Kubernetes not to expose the cluster info to external clients, as there can be many environments, but rather the server-side application connecting directly to the GitOps repo to get the connect configuration changes and enhance security. Yes. So Argo CD, we are a maintainer of Argo, by the way. Uh, through our integration and acquisition of CodeFresh. Um, so we do a lot of work with Argo CD. Argo CD is a very good solution for doing deployments um, with a, via a GitOps style um, to Kubernetes. And um, there's more than just Argo CD. There's rollouts, et cetera. But um, these are the other capabilities you can certainly use. Um, in the case of Octopus, we do integrate with via source control, but... Um, the way in which you define these is um, different. So Octopus um, prescribes a different philosophy um, through uh, its integration with um, deployment processes, et cetera. Um, it's not a sort of GitOps style per se. Um, uh, it's a little bit different there. So that does differ from Argo CD in that case. Um, but it is sim similar in the sense of co connectivity. We do have a feature be built into Octopus Deploy that allows you to have what's called object status. So if you do a deployment to Octopus, um, sorry, if you do a deployment to Kubernetes, I get my terminology right. If you do a deployment to Kubernetes uh, and you do it um, uh, utilizing Octopus, uh, we provide a live um, a, a live object status uh, that you can take a look at if you wish um, to see what is the status of my deployments as they've executed. So if I do a release to 
uh, say a Kubernetes cluster, I can I can see the status of my pods, uh, things like that as I do my deployments, which is similar to what you see in other environments as well. So another good question. Anyways, we'll wrap up there. Thanks for your time and attention. If you want to check out more of these webinars, you can check out our website, octopus.com. We have our webinars listed at slash webinars. But until next time, thank you for your time and attention, as I said before. Uh, and we'll see you on the next one. Happy deployments, everyone. Take care.